Welcome to Rocket Family Farms. Today's video is about our plumbing system. I just installed our manifold and tested it with at least one of the things because that's really all I have. Most things are still unattached. And it works, no leaks so far. So we are good with all of this. So in this upcoming video, you're gonna see some shots of me running pipe and me building this and putting it up. First, I had to run all the pipe and running it through the attic was the best option for me so that I can do cons consistent piping and I wouldn't have to dig into the slab underneath the house. And I could not go into the attic to run these because where I'm working, there's only about a foot and a half to a foot or to even a few inches in some places of leeway. Now I ran, I had to drill holes here. PEX uses, PEX is the width of a 5 8 bit. I used a 5 8 bit on a lot of them, but some of the PEX pipe I used was a really tight fit. So I would highly suggest using a 3 quarter inch bit. That gives it a little bit of wiggle space and running it through those holes is way easier. I had a really hard time with some of these. And then once I had the lines in, I tacked them in with these clips to keep them in place. And I ran all the cold lines together and ran all the hot lines together. Cold is in blue, hot is in red. And I had to keep them all and kind of keep track of them all so that when I went to do the manifold at the end, I knew what was what. And whenever I had to make a tight curve, tight turn, I used these clips. They're really a pain in the butt to get on, but they allow for a pretty tight turn without using any kind of fitting or anything like that. We have really hard water, so from what we understand, the fittings do not last long, and I really didn't want any fittings in the ceiling. I had to have fittings here, though. This is in the master bathroom, and this, the roof just gets too close to the top of the wall. So I insulated the pipes at the ends with this insulation, and then I did a 90 degree fitting to go from the top of the wall down below. I'm also going to use the same pipe insulation all throughout the walls. Now I used PEX Type B because about 12 years ago I bought that tool there. That's the crimper. Now you'll see here, this is where PEX type A is so much better. Because PEX type A, you use this drill like thing to expand the pipe, and then you put the pipe on the fitting. Here you have to put the fitting in place with the copper rings and then squeeze the copper rings. Because you have to squeeze the copper rings, I have to get this tool squeezed in between these rafters. And it was a tight fit, and sometimes that tool is a real pain in the butt. I got, I got some hurt arms doing all this work. Whereas PEX A, you can bring the fitting down, bring the pipe down below, use your tool to widen it, and then take the pipe and fit it into the fitting, and it works great. Now this is me building the manifold. So I, for the hot water... I have a manifold that has six lines and has a closed end. For the cold water, I have a manifold that has eight lines with two open ends. One end for the water incoming and the other end for the water outgoing to the water heater. And I just attached a valve to each fitting. I did, the, I did it this way. You could get a manifold that has those valves pre-built in. I did it this way because it's a lot less expensive to get just the copper manifold and then the valves separately because the valves are pretty cheap online through Amazon. Um, and honestly, everything I got on Amazon when it comes to this plumbing because everything was cheaper there. I don't do that for everything. Now this is me getting the manifold ready and putting it up on the wall. If you notice, I put the wood there. I separated the manifold and all of the plumbing away from the block because this particular wall is an exterior wall. So in the winter, it could potentially get really cold. 
and I just wanted that to have a gap of air in between the wall so that the cold doesn't directly transfer into the pipes and possibly freeze the pipes. The house will be heated with a furnace, so I'm not worried about the pipes freezing if they're within a couple inches of the wall, but they could draw the cold in touching the wall. And I used masonry screws, I used glue, I used everything I could to hold it in place. And here you see the end result. The manifold has lines going to the water heater, and I don't have the water heater right now, so I just put this temporary thing in to go back and at that point it's hot and it goes through the manifold throughout the rest of the house. This is the washer and dryer. I just kind of made it swoopy around just because I can and I was there. And this is the gap in between the wall and the pipes. Again, I did that intentionally so that the pipes would not freeze if it gets really cold in the winter and it's touching the wall because that block wall can transfer cold temperatures when it's directly touching. Before I publish the video, I wanted to answer this question, the, the question of why I built a manifold in the first place. Because technically, you could take the water line, run it through the house, and just branch everything off of the main water line. That's what most houses do, is they just have a trunk line, everything comes off of it. The reason I didn't want to do that is because I don't want to have to worry about kids flushing toilets while I'm taking a shower. It happens regardless of what you say and regardless of what you do, they'll still do it at some point. So the reason a manifold helps that is because let's say I'm running a shower in the master. So this, this right here is the master shower. And then somebody in the kids room they flush a the toilet. Well, that comes off of the main vanity. That pressure loss has to come all the way back to the manifold before it affects the shower that I'm in. So when it hits the manifold, it reduces the pressure on the entire system at the same time. So when they flush the toilet, I see a reduction in pressure, but I do not see a difference in hot versus cold pressure. When you have a trunk line and a toilet gets flushed, the pressure comes right out of the line for the cold, but not the hot. So you see reduction in pressure in the cold and no reduction in pressure in the hot, and you get scolded. That's why I wanted to do a manifold and take up this space in our small little house instead of just running a trunk line.